Beloved in Christ, I appreciate you joining me on the Healing Streams Reflection. The title for today's post is The Power of Attorney. The Power of Attorney. In fact, one of the benefits of walking in righteousness with God is that you have the power of attorney to use the name of Jesus Christ positively and graciously, not in vain. Because some use the name of Jesus in vain. Therefore, Jesus, in John chapter 14, verse 14, handed over this power of attorney to his disciples as well as you and I, who are children of God. He declared to them, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Beloved, you can only call the name of Jesus Christ with this power of attorney for it to work to the glory of God only after you have been a born again spirit filled Christian. On that platform, God hands you over. He normally will hand over to you the power of attorney in you know order to manifest the glory through the name of Jesus. And so, what is the power of attorney? For instance, you decided to take a holiday to go to Europe or Africa to enjoy your holiday. But you need to buy an apartment somewhere. And then you're about to close the deal. And so in your absence, you need someone, probably a lawyer or attorney, to give him the right to act as if you are there. So your lawyer signed the document that you are buying. In this instance, probably an apartment or a home. Meanwhile, you are thousands of miles away. And once he signed it in your name, though you weren't around, yet it was bought in your name. It's you who still bought the apartment because you have signed those documents saying Mr. X Z Y should carry out the transactions on your behalf. Beloved, 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ also gave you and I the power of attorney when he died on the cross of Calvary, shed his blood for the remission of our sins. And then was buried on the third day, rose again. And then declared that, just as my father has given to me the power and authority, so do I give to you. Saying, whatsoever you shall ask, using my name, it shall be done. That is the reason we call on the name of Jesus to manifest God's glory. Because he gave us the power of his name. John 16, 23 said, he said, in that you shall ask, 
you shall a very very I say unto you very very this is a very powerful statement whatsoever ye shall ask the father in my name he will give it to you and in our John 14:14 14, 14 Bible verse Jesus says if you ask anything in my name I will do it he says in my name you don't go in another person's name. You don't go in the name of angels. You don't say Angel Gabriel, Angel Michael, or Angel Maroni. You are using the wrong name. The door won't open. It could only and it can only open through the name of Jesus. Because that is where the power of attorney resides beloved in christ you don't call angel raphael because you need healing jesus christ is the source of the healing and that is the benefit of walking in righteousness for instance in acts chapter 3 the bible says that when Peter and John were going or went together to the temple at the time of prayer, the Bible says there was a certain man lame from his mother's womb. He was lame. He was born with it. You know, there are certain health conditions that people are born with. And the Bible says that they carried him dairy at the gates of the temple, which is called beautiful. And always this man lived from the womb, womb, mother's womb, will always ask for arms. And so when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asks for arms. He asks for arms. Believe that, uh, beloved in Christ. You see, when good times come, people don't know how to receive it. When good times come, this man who is residing at the temple gate didn't realize that it was a good time, a season appointed unto him to receive the best. We are people like that in the church. They don't know how to receive good things. They are so used to asking arms. They are so used to asking prayers. They are so used to going, visiting prophets and then seeking direction from them. Beloved, yes, these are the people used to asking arms. And in the face of changing opportunity, they are still trying to get a handout. They are still trying to get a handout. We have a lot of people in the church today who are always receiving a handout from the pastor. A handout for visiting preachers. They don't know how to receive from the Lord. Beloved, we have a name that heaven recognizes. It's a blessed name. It's a powerful name. It's a name that hell itself dreads. So when you call in the name of Jesus, he speaks of your walk in righteousness. It is just a benefit and joy that you and I know Christ and we can walk and then by his grace Walk in righteousness. Beloved, it's very, very important for you to understand it. So Peter and John had to drop the name on this brother like a bomb, like a tornado, like a hurricane. And so the Bible says, see Peter and John about to go into the temple and ask for arms and fixing his eyes on him with John and Peter uh, well, on him the Bible says 
that with John and Peter, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention. That is Acts chapter 3, verses 5 to 6. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, you know, this is opportunity. That's why I said, most often, in good times, opportune times, a lot of people don't know how to receive direct from God. They always receive the crumbs. They always receive handouts from the hands of people. They are still dealing with middle men and women. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter says, silver and gold, I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle becomes, and his feet and ankle bones received strength. Today I prophesy that God will give you that strength. It's a bet. He said, you are expecting gold and silver, but this is not going to be like since the day you were born in your mother's womb. No. He says, something you is going to change, but this is not going to be like the guys who will normally carry you and then come and put you here and then in the evening, all the money that you got, you got to share with them. Say, but, though you have gone through a lot, which has given you heart attack. He says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. What do Peter and John have? They have the name of the attorney. They have the, 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 the at, I, mean, I mean, the power of attorney of the name of Jesus. They have it. And you took God the name of Jesus. You took God the Holy Spirit. All you have to do is to prophesy it. And when you prophesy it, I tell you, all demons will tremble. Every person around you at this time in your life with disability, any drug addict around you will be delivered. People around you will never be the same. Beloved, they will never be the same. Why? Because something qualifies you. The divine nature of God in you qualifies you to use the name of Jesus. Beloved, I want to remind you that the day you were born into this world, you became a partaker of the Father. You became a partaker of your dark earthly nature. But the day you got born again, born from above, you also became a partaker of God's divine nature in you. That was Second Peter chapter 1, verses 4 tells us. But you see, it wouldn't work unless you activate it by systematic and consistent steady meditation and obeying the word of God. Meditating. And obeying it as Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19 tells us. If you're obedient, you eat the good of the land. You practice the word of God. And you make sure that you build on a rocky land. 